Thank you for the invitation. I'd like to thank Dr. Brunt and Dr. Bercy for the great mentorship in this project, and I really appreciate Dr. Strasburg's referral to hunting and target identification as a fellow Texan with a uh, real hunting culture. I have no financial disclosures. I do have disclosures that I'm a program director and that we do routine clan geography because my patients in an underserved area on the Texas-Mexico border really don't have the option of a patellary or transplant surgeon in the immediate vicinity and our common duct injuries often have to refer to Dallas or Houston for definitive repair with delayed injury. So we typically, as a faculty, in our county safety net hospital, identify all injuries and proceed to work together to repair them at the time of surgery. My objectives are to talk about the imaging modalities for target identification, discuss the population-based studies that should hopefully convince you why you should be using these adjunctive modalities in achieving the critical view of safety and how they serve to approach very difficult cholecystectomy dissections where it will be difficult to achieve that critical view. Calangiography was invented by Dr. Maritzi from Argentina in 1937, basically to avoid negative common duct explorations in dilated ducts to decrease the incidence of duct injuries and remove calculi from the duct. Rationale is to look for the anomalies, retain stones, and prevent common duct injury. And as we know, the ability to discover injury intraoperatively greatly reduces the incidence of delayed detection with the morbidity of delayed biliary peritonitis and subsequent reconstruction, which leads to a lot of the morbidity and mortality in these cases. What I, I find from teaching residents is most of them have no idea what a complete cholangiogram looks like. Obviously, from this, we need to identify the entire uh, ampullary complex with filling of the duodenum and identify the left and right anterior and posterior hepatic ducts to verify uh, the safety of our dissection. Um, indications for the selective cholangiogram include a dilated duct by CT or ultrasound, um, history of gallstone pancreatitis, elevated enzymes, and alkaline phosphatase, a history of jaundice, or intraoperatively in a difficult cholecystectomy where a critical view of safety uh, cannot be readily obtained. Of course, just a few notes on technique. Obviously, these pictures are from Dr. Uh, Bercy that demonstrate the critical view of safety as well as um, operative technique for intraoperative cholangiogram, uh, which demonstrate uh, circumferential dissection of the cystic duct with ductotomy less than 50% to prevent avulsion and proper um, lateral and anterior retraction to move the cystic duct away from the common duct. And here we um, demonstrate a lot of, uh, to tell my residents to approach the duct with the um, cannula in a parallel fashion to facilitate cannulation. Oftentimes the failure rate is from valves of hyster, which may need to be ruptured with a right angle clamp or with scissors or with a, um, a larger ductotomy. Oftentimes these can also be treated by tapering the uh, cannulation uh, catheter and using a wire guided technique. So, we um, have known from the literature that, that use of intraoperative cholangiography prevents full thickness injury and decreases the severity of injury. As shown, this was an intraoperative cholangiogram that demonstrated extravasation of contrast in a partial thickness injury, which proceeded to uh, intraoperative repair over a T-tube. And as the literature and cohort studies has demonstrated, survival following repair is similar to those patients that did not have a common duct injury. So this really does provide an excellent option for detecting these injuries and preventing further morbidity. This calandrogram here demonstrates a total duct transection. I know I've seen this intraoperatively on my own patients, and it's a gut-wrenching feeling to see this type of calandrogram. The difference is, is the ability to go back and do the hepatic OJ genostomy and prevent, present the patient with a single operation with decreased morbidity is uh, really a feeling of success and, and uh, victory when, when dealing with these difficult uh, sclerotic gallbladders, and it really prevents long-term morbidity from having a common duct injury, which often can be very debilitating. This is an example of a reversible injury where the uh, surgeon ran into extensive bleeding at the hilar plate, placed multiple clips to control the bleeding, and subsequently the clangiogram demonstrates complete occlusion of the proximal right and left ducts. With removal of these clips, the cholangiogram reverted to a normal cholangiogram, and the patient had no further complications. The incidence of duct stones is estimated at approximately 10%. It carries recommendation for removal of the ducts 
During the same session as laparoscopic cholecystectomy, in the absence of cholangiography, these patients go on for ERCP and may have concomitant complications of pancreatitis. Obviously, we've talked about Maritzi syndrome. Without having operative cholangiography, there's a high incidence and in, in predilection toward ductal injury in these patients. If the triangle of colo cannot be dissected or the cystic duct cannot be identified, it's also important to consider cholecystocholangiography with a pneumoperitoneum needle placed into the, either the infundibulum or the fundus with clips placed in the suspected triangle of Collot for identification of the area for adequate dissection. Population-based studies have uh, demonstrated significant risk prevention from use of intraoperative cholangiography. Most famously, the studies from Flum looked at over 1.5 million cases to demonstrate approximately 8,000 gallbladder injuries, demonstrating significant risk reduction at 0.58% uh, without intraoperative cholangiography, down to 0.39% of injury with the use of cholangiography. You know, the cost-effectiveness analysis of prevention of 2.5 deaths for every 10,000 patients and a cost savings of about uh, $390,000 per life saved. And if we look at the approximate level of a settlement for these cases, the, the cost of society for routine use of cholangiography is much less than the cost of litigation for a bile duct injury. The uh, Swedish inpatient registry by Waj uh, showed a uh, routine use of cholangiography reduced common duct injury rates by 34%. The um, use of uh, cholangiography in the Australian study showed significant protective effect for routine cholangiography with a uh, rather high 1.9% odds ratio for duct injury without cholangiography dropping to 0.41. With use of cholangiography, the interesting part of the Australian study is they stratified two complex cases demonstrating an eightfold redu uh, reduced risk of complications when use of cholangiography was employed. The uh, largest study referred to previously by Dana Tillem, the Gallrick study, showed that intention to use intraoperative cholangiography reduced the risk of death by 62%. And I think like Dr. Strasberg has mentioned, if the intention to use is, is in those surgeons that attempt to dissect out and identify the cystic duct can triage patients away from total dissection toward subtotal cholecystectomy. I think that intention reduces the overall incidence. The Kaplan-Meier analysis also showed in these patients that early detection and repair of duct injuries at the primary operation improved survival significantly because it avoided the complex morbidity of biliary peritonitis. Meta-analysis also has been done which demonstrates basically um, having of uh, use of routine cholangiography halves the um, bile duct injury incidence and that the use of IOCs associated with improved intraoperative recognition and decreased severity of injury, decreased need for hepatocoach agenostomy, and decreased need for reoperative procedures at a specialist referral center. Moving on to laparoscopic ultrasound technique, which I know Dr. Diesel's uh, pioneered here in Chicago, or from Chicago, um, using a uh, laparoscopic ultrasound probe with a side viewing linear array transducer. Um, the advantage of laparoscopic ultrasound is the color and power Doppler waveform to allow identification of the cystic artery at the same time as identifying the duct. And this video demonstrates moving from the ampulla vater to the cystic duct, uh, common hepatic duct junction with the picture in picture view to allow um, anterior view of the hepatoduodenal ligament exposing longitudinal and oblique views. Of course, the um, uh, Mickey Mouse view with the common bile duct and the hepatic artery and portal vein easily in view. Of course, the uh, comparison demonstrates comparable exam success rate with uh, laparoscopic ultrasound having better positive predictive value and specificity. Limitations, of course, include um, the difficulty in evaluating the ampulla of otter, the difficulty in uh, evaluating the intrapancreatic ductal portions, uh, basically the ampullary complex and visualization of bile duct injuries are better visualized by cholangiography. Benefits include short completion times, avoidance of irradiation, ease of repetition during serial stages of dissection. After the initial capital investment, the, the cost is less expensive. The limitations are surgeon unfamiliarity with the learning curve of 20 or more cases and the need for a special probe. Multicenter trials that I know were started by Dr. Diesel um, demonstrated that the ultrasound was critical in determining um, the safety of complex dissections 
and uh, had a very low false positive and false negative rate and no incidence of bile duct injury in these cases. Um, as we know, the severe bile duct, severe cholecystitis has been identified as an independent factor for bile duct injury and prospective studies using a case match control uh, between laparoscopic ultrasound and difficult open cases has demonstrated that the uh, laparoscopic ultrasound aided in a uh, higher rate of completion of the complex cholecystitis cases without bile duct injury. And the laparoscopic group had significantly fewer complications in complex cholecystitis when employing laparoscopic ultrasound technology compared with open case match controls. The uh, final technique I'd like to discuss is near infrared fluorescent cholangiography, which again, as Dr. Strasberg says, is, is more an issue of target identification and teaching people how to achieve that critical view of safety. Cholangiography uses intravenous injected into cyanine green and their infrared imaging to image the biliary tree, which allows identification of anatomy simultaneous with dissection of the cystic duct in relation to the gallbladder and the common duct. The difficulty is efficacy may be limited by cholecystitis or obesity with a depth of tissue penetration of three millimeters. And oftentimes in acute cholecystitis, the endocyanin green will not be able to fill the cystic duct or gallbladder. Here's a video demonstrating the cystic duct common hepatic duct junction and how there's simultaneous visualization in the section of the structures while there's visualization. And again, there's a, a critical view of safety with entire dissection of the cystic duct and artery in this example. Repetitive real-time images make serial imaging more feasible than the static intraoperative cholangiogram, and cholangiography allows simultaneous visualization with the section intended as a navigational tool to achieve the critical view of safety and can also help delineate landmarks prior to dissection. The newest innovation is the color-segmented fluorescence that achieves separate biliary ductal anatomy from the background liver saturation and allows uh, more uh, rapid identification may facilitate shortening the learning curve for our residents in education. And this is the example of the color fluorescence cholangiography. And as you can see compared to the video in the lower corner, the liver saturation has been subtracted completely. Largest series to date performed both intraoperative cholangiography and the near-infrared fluorescence for comparison and demonstrated that visualization of the cystic ducts prior to any dissection was at uh, 56%, with final uh, visualization at 95%, which was proven to be more effective than intraoperative cholangiography, which had a rate of only 72% completion. And this is the um, large study with, uh, from Osai demonstrating the um, cystic duct identification at 95%. As should be noted, the um, common bile duct only at 76% and common hepatic at 69. Really, the um, demonstration is that the cholangiography is a much better technique for demonstrating the entire ductal anatomy in presenting target identification for the critical view. Potential cost savings after initial uh, capital investment compared with cholangiogram are significant for the low cost of the endocyanine green. And with improved identification of cystic duct, the real cost saving may translate into shorter operative times and reduce cost in the operating room. So in conclusion, the uh, imaging te techniques help assure safe dissection when the critical view of safety cannot be readily achieved. The population-based and cohort studies argue significantly for the use of routine cholangiography and routine use of adjunctive imaging technologies to facilitate safe dissection. They allow repeat imaging in many of these applications, and the newer technologies will allow simultaneous visualization and dissection. Thank you. Thank you.